Well, traders, I'm down trading uh, today. Uh, an almost perfect week. I think I had one losing day through this uh, week. And um, as you can see, my account here, I had a great trade, actually two trades in Amazon. That's a huge winner for me, over 10 grand. Shorted it once, then took another trade, a little smaller size, but uh, still a great trade in Amazon. I had a very nice trade in uh, Boeing. One winner, one loser in Beyond, but I'm still down quite a bit. My second quantity in Beyond, I'm going to discuss that soon, was much smaller than my first. So it just reduced a bit my uh, initial loss in Beyond. Uh, a very small winner in KBH or so, I still, although I still have uh, 400 shares run, riding and up another $100 there. Uh, a small loser in WDC and in win, but I'm going to finish up $7,600, which is uh, very good. What I do want to talk about is uh, the relationship between the S&P and beyond. Now, you know that I usually say that we can get some, um, some kind of uh, pre-warning about what's going to happen with the stock that we're trading if you're watching the S&P. And um, that's a very interesting uh, thing to watch here, the S&P and beyond. Now, I'm showing you beyond in one minute candle. That's why, because I, I made my decisions based on one minute candle and I'm showing you the S&P, which I usually look at uh, five minute candles. I'm showing it right now. I'm displaying it with one minute candles as well. Uh, but I usually watch it uh, in five minute candles. What's interesting to see is the way that um, the stock although not trending in the same direction, still following the S&P 500. Now, again, watch the S&P. It's trending lower, right? Clearly, it's trending lower. Watch beyond. It's trending higher. So why do I keep saying that uh, the stock is usually, the, most stocks are usually following the market? Look at the way it happened. You see, the first move in the S&P was up. We started with a big gap down today. First move was up. Look at beyond over here. Look at the time beyond decided to come down and look at the point here at the lows uh, just before 9.45. Look at what happened here just before 9.45. So you see the S&P moved to a new low beyond which has more buyers than sellers is responding to the market, is moving with the market, is definitely moving with the market, but it still has more buyers and sellers. Therefore, just, you know, a higher low when the market was moving to a new low beyond was moving to a higher low and then look at the S&P just pulling back up not much pulling back up beyond is pulling much higher that was the point where it took out my first short trade I mean I couldn't know it's going to move up that much I shorted it here initially came down took me out actually took me out over here so anyway took me out that was a very unpleasant loss for me and then look at what happens next S&P is moving to a new low right over here. What does beyond do? It's, it moves down just a bit. That's a, that's a lower, that's a higher low for beyond. So beyond still have more buyers and sellers. And when finally the S&P looked like it may move over the highs, which happened right over here at around 10 o'clock, then beyond, we spotted that, we realized that beyond is probably going to move higher. And we posted it for a long, I believe that was 97.40, just below, just before the highs. Uh, so we expected it to move over the highs. We took a long trade in beyond because, again, look, the market moved higher, beyond moved to a new high. The market did not move to a new high, it just moved higher. And then the market came down again. Look at the time where the market came down again. You see, that's 10.15 here. So just before that, it just moved down. Look at beyond. It still is trending higher, but what does Beyond do? Uh, a higher low again, a higher low. So Beyond's trending higher. Now look at the S&P spiking higher. And right afterwards, I think it took Beyond like maybe one minute or maybe less than one minute. You can, you can watch this video later and you can see that. And then Beyond just came up with the S&P once more. Now I will not be surprised if Beyond's gonna move over the highs. Again, more buyers than sellers. Market was trending lower. But whenever the market was moving to a new low, beyond move to a lower high, sorry, to a higher low. <laughs> and then, you know, it keeps trending with the market, same direction as the market. Um, sorry, different direction in the market, it's trending higher, <clears throat> but it's definitely responding to the market exactly when the S&P comes down. 
it's responding to the market. So again, watch stocks with the market. Every stock you trade, uh, which is over $10 and has more than 1 million shares in volume, is, um, is going to behave this way. Most likely 60% of the stock's movement comes from the S&P 500. That's the only thing I want to say. Um, and you know, it, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is my biggest loser today, but we did take one good trade in beyond today. And the, you know, the way it behaved is, is, is very interesting. So that's something to learn from. That, that's why I thought we should discuss that. So it's, uh, that's, that's it for me for today. Uh, the S&P, as you can see, is refusing to move lower, although touching a new low. One of the strongest reversals um, is when we have a new low or a new high and then we're reversing. That's a, usually a very, very, very strong reversal indication, uh, which usually says we're not going to see a new low, which usually says this was the low of the day. But, you know, it's a Friday. Who knows? It's a little bit hard to anticipate. So have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Um, it was a pleasure. Another green day. Definitely enjoyed my day. Hope you did too. Uh, enjoy your weekend. And I will see you all here next week.